I've been involved with community radio for, for 10 years, since KPFZ got started, and so I value local media. And I think that, that the PEG Channel can be the same kind of resource that KPFZ has been. The thing is that KPFZ has been independently owned and operated by the listeners, and, and uh, that's given us a lot more leeway than, than PEG has had. PEG's had to deal with government entities, and those government entities have interfered, I think, with uh, program content. So I'd like to see PEG maybe form its own corporation and uh, become more independent so that they can disseminate information without without having the government step in and, and uh, make those decisions for them. <coughs> public Access TV, or Pub, PEG, that's Public Education and Government Access TV. It's a cornerstone of unfettered information even more so than PBS. It has fewer controls if allowed to happen. PEG access may be mandated by local or state government to provide any combination of programming to enable the members of the public, accredited educational institutions, and the government to produce their own shows and televise them to a mass audience. Good idea. But there's an or in that. Or keep the income from the cable fees in a general fund. Is this the local control that everybody wants? Because there's an option that perhaps is causing the problem. This is a 1984 law by Barry Goldwater. And I wonder if Barry knew really what he was doing, because it's caused a little bit of a problem. If a local government wants to keep it uh, in their coffers, then we won't necessarily have your pet. The FCC in 1992 has uh, ruled that they have the authority to create rules locally prohibiting certain content, and that's good, uh, but only if it still allows for free speech and free access. Now, all of that is still in limbo. And I go back to the history, you know, when I was in uh, McClatchy Broadcasting, I worked for them in the 60s, and I was a, a mainframe programmer, so a lot of this was being debated at the time about whether it should happen. And so PEG was being debated, and I listened to a lot of it. You fast forward to the day, and you can see that there's been many rulings and there's been many challenges and we have what we have and perhaps it's time for a relook at having good free access to what's going on in government for sure. Education that's available to everybody and the public involved in saying what they need to say from a free speech standpoint. So with so those many rulings since those days, uh, I'm not really uh, up to speed on, I've got a lot of catching up to do, but it seems clear that the right of government to put cable fees into its own pocket is part of the problem maybe some controls that require respectful language are needed so that we don't have rebound from people who feel like uh, they're being disrespected. But in any case, there seems to be a lack of growth in our local PEG, and this is compared to adjoining counties. So maybe one approach would be to look at the structure of those local uh, counties and their operating rules, and maybe we can use some of their examples to move a nonprofit into more of a curator role locally and get it kick-started again here. Technology is changing, however, that may circumvent all of this problem with all the current rules with TV. Who knows tomorrow? Maybe you'll get it right off of your uh, small screen that you attach to your sunglasses and you won't have to worry about TV at all. <coughs> Public Access, which is our local uh, Mediacom Channel 8, uh, P stands for Public, E stands for Education, and G stands for Government, uh, is uh, a project that I picked, took on when I first became on City Council uh, 10 years ago. And uh, it was kind of sitting there, not really accessible to the public, uh, so I picked that project up and um, we have um, upgraded our equipment, uh, we have uh, moved it out of the inside of the city hall building and put it into its own room. Uh, we make bylaws and we are starting to move forward with it. It takes a long time when there's big projects like this. My hope for the public access channel is to actually be able to be even more accessible to the public with some studios. Um, if we're lucky enough that uh, 
the youth center was to be able to get the building where the old chamber was. We would love to be able to put the, some editing equipment in there and uh, make it to where the public will be able to come in and edit their different uh, videos, be able to get them on the air faster because they'll have the equipment to do so. We'd love to see the kids, the, the youth get more involved in doing, say, their own uh, news channel, their own news videos to be able to air, let the people know what's going on in the community. Um, in fact, this is being done for public, you know, by a public access person, producer. We'd love to see more of the community get involved. I don't believe that the community knows enough that they can put things on our public access channel. So hopefully that we can get more information out. Uh, need to raise some funds, so you know it'd be nice if people started donating more. But I think that the information needs to be out there a little bit more than what it has been. I think there needs to be more advertisement on that we have this public access channel, and get the people more involved in it. Have some events to let them know what we're about. Uh, show people how to do videos and make videos. So show some of these uh, people who have events. Uh, don't know that they can videotape them and put them on the air. I, the, that type of information I think needs to be more uh, in the public's eyes. Let them see what they can do and show them how to get it on the air. So I hope the schools continue to do, they're starting to pick up on some of that, starting to teach the kids how to do videos and editing, and I hope that continues on. And, uh, I hope in the near future we'll have a, a studio that will be open for the people to be able to come and have the equipment to do that themselves also.